Hello and welcome to another SIG Energy system walkthrough. This property behind me has six panels on this north facing roof and on the other side there's a 10 panel system facing south. It's a cracking install and we use the SIG Energy inverter and battery system to get this one up and running but we had a few challenges along the way that I want to cover off in this video. So come along for a walk around the system to show how it's been installed how we utilise the SIG Energy hardware to get the best system possible under the constraints we were given, and also some integrations with the EV charger that was already in place. The garage behind me is clearly a huge roof space. So when the first inquiry came in for this job, I came out, measured up the roof to see what would fit, and had a good chat with the customers about their energy usage in the home, the fact that they've got two EVs or EV hybrids, and they're charging at the garage. So we talked about different options for roof mounted solar on the house, but this building, it just lends itself to really having a lot of panels and you know, generating a lot of power. And it's down the garden, it's not on the house. Not that that's an issue. A lot of people go for solar on the home. Some people don't like the look of things. So particularly when you've got a beautiful rural property, having a big barn down the garden to put your solar on just makes sense, doesn't it? Now the challenges we had with this system was the fact that there's a lot of shading. So to start with behind me, you can see the trees. This tree on this side is obviously to the north of the property. So we don't get any shadows from that tree, but to the south, you can see in the background, we had a couple of trees that can, can cast shadows on the roof during different times of the day and year. They are green leaves, so they do drop off in the winter, uh, but we're still gonna get quite a heavy shade. So we knew we had to go with some sort of system that would take optimizers or micro inverters or something along those lines. So what we ended up with was a full system that covered both sides of this roof and would provide a hell of a lot of energy to the home. The DNO said no. We put that application into National Grid and due to the rural area, um, a few installations in the area of already having a lot of solar, we were already at capacity other than paying to upgrade the local transformer or go for a three-phase conversion, both of which would have been quite expensive. So in this instance, the design that best fit the plan was actually to stick to a 3.6 kilowatt inverter and maximize the panels that could go into it. Now, one of the great things about the SIG Energy range is you've got a lot of options on inverter sizes. So we ended up with a 3.6 kilowatt inverter which can handle two times DC. So even with a 3.6 kilowatt inverter, which was restricted as our maximum inverter size by National Grid, this is separate to export, and we can talk about that later in this video. Um, we were able to maximize the inverter to take as many panels as possible, and we've ended up with 10 on the south facing roof and six on the north facing roof as well. In the peak of summer, that 3.6 kilowatt inverter, it won't be able to process all that power all in one go. But the beauty of the SIG Energy system means that it can pass 3.6 kilowatts to the home and it can also charge the battery at the same time. So using the settings that are built into the standard app on SIG Energy, we can use something called feed-in priority. Now every manufacturer has their own version of this and different companies call it different things. But what this essentially means is it will charge the battery from clipped energy. So as the battery fills up during the day, and it reaches to the point where it's full, you will lose the ability to store that additional energy and you'll get clipped energy being lost. If you use a setting where you can charge only from clipped energy, you can set that during the summer months so the battery charge will only start working once it's getting clipped. So energy that would have been lost goes straight into the battery. And that's one of the benefits of the SIG Energy system that that's just built in as a standard option in the app and you can set it to run. It's very easy for the customer to manage this. And on days like today, the system has not generated a massive amount of energy. So we can still you know, fill the battery up as normal, but on different days where it's producing more energy, you can set it so it only clips on, it only stores clipped energy. And it works really well like that. It's not as efficient as having a 10 kilowatt inverter that can just bang all your power into the grid, obviously. Now, not every property has got access to that. And this is the thing. A lot of the people go online and they'll do the research and they'll, they'll hear, oh, you've got to have this, you've got to have that, you've got to have the other. But if you've got a set of restraints that you've got to work within, 
Luckily, the SIG Energy System is very flexible in that you can change your design, change your configuration, change your battery size, so you can manage the system that suits your property best. So all these packages you see out there where you, you've got an inverter and 10 panels and a battery buy online, you, you probably just need someone to sit down with you and talk about what that means for your home and how it can actually make a difference. Because if you're not charging from clipped energy on a system like this, you could be losing a lot of energy in the summer. Now, don't get me wrong, in the winter months, probably not enough sun to charge a battery every day, in which case you'll be using it in the home and you won't have to charge from clipped energy. You'll be charging the battery at night as well. So the joy of the SIG Energy system is it's flexible to work both ways. And even with a small inverter from a constrained system, you can still run a large number of panels and it's not really going to hamstring the whole system over the life of the install. We're able to work away around it with the, the clever hardware and clever apps, basically. Now, if that sounds like it's all a little bit complicated, trust me, it really isn't. Once it's set up once, you just set it up and let it go and it does the job. And if you pick a decent installer, hopefully they'll come along and set it all up for you. I know we certainly do with all our installs. So the customer gets the app, they get showed how to use the system, how it's going to work. And it's really easy to change the settings yourself on the app if you need to down the line, or a bit about because of forgery install and they can do it for you, even do it remotely, which makes it super simple. One of the other challenges we had with this installation, as you can see, the panels are miles away. So luckily for us, whoever built the property and did the renovation down the garden put in a pretty hefty cable at the time of install. So there's a big enough cable all the way down the bottom end of the garden to manage the solar install. Now, I don't know if they had that planned in the future or if they just wanted unlimited power down their garden and in the garage for future renovations and future extras. But either way, when the current owners came to us, we were able to look at what was already in place and reuse some of the existing infrastructure. Now, it was lucky that this cable was already down there because Tarmac Drive would have had to dig up to get the cable in, but we were able to avoid that. We used the existing wiring and we designed a system where the panels can go down there, so could the battery. The volt drop wouldn't be too much for the cable run and it'd all work well. What we did need was some sort of power monitoring at the grid end to enable the fact that the system can see the grid and also the existing hypervolt charger would be able to charge during the day without discharging the battery. And that's all done with the power monitors built into the SIG Energy system. And not every system on the market has that out there. Not many systems can monitor third party EVs and stop them discharging the battery into the EV. But that's what we've been able to do on this system, even using the existing cabling, which was a great bonus. We were lucky that there was some ducting in done by the kind BT engineers in the past. So we could get our data cables in with the phone lines, which worked really well. And that got us under the drive and we was able to get around the front of the house to the meter box and make those CT clamp connections at the meter box. So the hypervolt was in before we got here and it's already wired straight back to the meter box, which is great. It's all on its own power supply. And the way the SIG energy system works is it will monitor this supply cable and you can see it in the app as a third party EV and you can prevent the battery discharging here. So when this is turned on during the day, the battery will know not to release any energy because it's seeing the current flow go into the hypervolt. Now, what it also does is it can see that the hypervolt may be using seven kilowatts, but the house may be using two kilowatts. So it can just release two kilowatts to power the house and it all works really well. Now, in the real world, what most people do is just charge the batteries at night at the same time as they charge their hypervolt and they don't fight with each other. But the great thing about the hypervolt chargers is it gets you access to the intelligent EV tariffs such as Octopus Intelligent. What that means is Octopus can give you free energy in the middle of the day and as a bonus, they turn your car on. Now that would normally cause your battery system to discharge itself into the load because it doesn't know the difference. But what it will do in this situation is stop the battery from discharging, let the car charge from the grid and take a benefit of that free energy or cheaper energy outside its regular charging periods. Now, as it is at the moment, I think the customers are still on Octopus Intelligent with this and they've not noticed any difference in the car charging. So the battery is doing its job. So we were even lucky enough to have a nice little corner of the workshop where the battery system can find a home. 
And over here, we've got the BAT-10, which is a nine kilowatt of usable energy with the SIG Energy 3.6 kilowatt inverter on top of it. All the AC and DC isolators are in here as well. And obviously the solar is on the roof just above us. So it made a nice compact installation down in this garden building and it worked really well on this site. So it's very nicely installed and the customer's got plenty of space. If he wants to add more battery power down the line, is able to just add it to the stack and we can move the inverter up and the batteries go in line. Now, what's great about this is in future with this 3.6 kilowatt inverter having such a restriction on it, if we find that he's really over generating in the summer and even having the batteries set to only charge from Clips Energy, he can add more batteries to take that up. But at the moment with their current energy usage, it was borderline whether they'd actually make use of all that extra capacity on another battery we could probably have introduced a six kilowatt hour system into this and gone for either two sixes to make a 12 or a nine and a six. And they'd have probably been all right. But in the end, what they decided to do was see this winter out, see how they're going into spring next year and make another decision then. Usage habits will change over time as well. I don't think we've done an installation yet where a customer's electric usage in the home hasn't gone up after the solar installation because once you've got that solar and you've got the free energy from the sun, you've got the cheap energy from the battery, and that's running your house all year round, the temptation to move more things to electric and less on gas is quite strong. So easy wins with that are changing your gas hob to an electric induction hob. You could change some of your water heating instead of combi boilers and water cylinders from the gas. You can use your electric immersion elements. We've even had customers fit a single two kilowatt hand wash unit into their utility room because it's quicker then to just warm the water from the two kilowatt heater instead of running the gas boiler to pump it over the whole length of the house and that works out quite as well and then us at home we have an electric fire in the living room so even though we have gas central heating and i know don't crucify me because i've not got an air, air source heat pump um we have less gas central heating on because we've got that electric fire and also our aircon systems are running in the summer taking advantage of that cheap energy so people's usage habits will change and your battery usage might go up but we don't like to push too much battery people battery on people right at the start because if things don't change you're stuck with this battery that you're not going to use whereas designing a system that's flexible enough to change over time with you that's kind of the goal that we want and that's why we really like the sig energy system because it makes it very easy to do this so that wraps up another installation and another system walkthrough. Just some of the highlights on this one. It's 16 450 watt JA solar panels on this lovely garden building in this fantastic property in South Derbyshire. We've got a 3.6 kilowatt SIG energy inverter. The reason for the 3.6 was, as I said earlier, the DNO restricted the inverter size and the export size. So we were really constrained of not only having an export limit, which is quite co common, but also having a DNO restriction on the inverter size itself. And we've gone with a nine kilowatt hour battery as well. And then we've got the Hypervolt EV charger that was already existing, but we've integrated it into the SIG energy system using the power monitors. So overall, a fantastic system. If you want something like this for your home, feel free to give us a shout. We're based in Derby. Company name is Electrical Innovations and we'll be looking forward to getting you a quote soon. And thanks very much for watching. See you on the next video. Make sure you subscribe to get them updates and hopefully we'll see you again soon.